All right, so when we have a, a meeting in Teams, like we're doing right now, there, there are certain pieces of the Microsoft 365 platform that are, that are in use. So over in Teams, of course, we have the chat window. Uh, we have voice and video and anything that's presented. If we take notes during a meeting, those are saved in, uh, as far as I can tell, in SharePoint. And files we can share from a, a SharePoint site in the meeting. And when we record the meeting, the meeting gets saved into stream and it gets posted into the, uh, the the chat for the meeting. So if we look at this chat over here uh, from yesterday, I've got these recordings that we did while we were practicing for our demo. And I can open these right in stream. I can play them in line if I want to. And that's great. The, the problem that we have is that over in Microsoft Stream, there's no support for guest access. That's kind of our problem that we have with, with this whole solution. So we looked for a, a solution to that problem and, and I'm gonna we're gonna show you today what we came up with. So when the recording completes over in Microsoft Stream, the organizer of the meeting gets this kind of email. Your content is ready to stream. So I could easily just open up the video and stream, download it, upload it to uh, a place where my guests can access it, like YouTube or something like that. I think that's what uh, what happens with these meetings. But eh, we like to complicate things unnecessarily as practice for learning the platform to help our customers understand how to do things. Uh, that's what we've done here. So what happens is I've got a rule in my set up in my Outlook mailbox that says anytime I get an email with your meeting recording is here, it's going to forward that email over to a special account that we've created called the curator. And the curator account is sort of like a, a human bot that we use to automate some processes. Now, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to try to solve this problem that a guest has when they try to access the video from inside of Teams. We need to give them alternate access to it. So uh, our solution here is to copy that recording over into the SharePoint site. So we do a, a, a project portal, Office 365 group for each project that we do and invite the customers to participate in that. And that's the best place for them to go to review the recording. So we wanna get that recording over into that project portal. And again, I could manually do that, no problem, but I wanna try to automate as much of my work as I can. So that's kind of what we're up to. And I want to learn the, the platform. So what happens when this email gets forwarded onto the curator, a flow uh, will execute. So the, the curator has created a flow that says when, when a, a, an email of that specific, with that specific word in the words in the subject is received, we're gonna do some things. Now, this is my first flow that I ever created. I, I have learned quite a bit but uh, we'll just jump through some of the important bits here. So we're gonna parse the name of the recording from the subject. Uh, we're going to parse the URL to the video in stream. Um, we're gonna get some info about our users, our participants in this flow. So the curator, of course, and the user that, that sent the email to the curator. And then we're gonna get a list of our active projects from project server. So we, we track our statuses or projects in a few different places in project server. We have a list of all of our active projects and those are typically the ones that we have meetings for. So we're gonna add those to a list of options that we're gonna send as an adaptive card to the user that sent us the email. And if I switch over to the Flowbot over here, I've got a chat from the Flowbot saying, would you like me to curate that for you? And it's actually an approval that's running. That list of projects that we that we pulled from uh, the server is here. It's a shortened list because there's a limit to how many options you can do in this style in an adaptive card in Teams. But if we look at the same thing in the approvals tab, we get to see a much larger list. So let me just find this one and I scroll it down here. And then here is the, the larger list of projects. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna use the the adaptive card version to respond to this one. And let's just pick the, the project here and I'll just hit submit. And with that, the flow will continue on. 
and it will wait for it, it's going to after it waits for a, a, an approval, we check to see if we said to curate the meeting, uh, whether we chose a project or selected other and typed in a project name. If we chose do not curate, then the flow just stops. But now we're going to set the project. We're going to get uh, the comments that were submitted and we're going to send a request to the curator account. And that is where we're going to hand it off to Francisco, who built the rest of this solution, and he's going to walk us through the process for getting the recording up into the project portal. So, Francisco, you ready to, to take the stage? Yep. All right. Thank you, Jim. Let me share my screen. All right. So, picking up where uh, Jim left off, uh, now I'm logged in as the curator. So, I'm assuming the role of the, the human curator. And as Jim responded to that flow bot, now I got this, uh, I got a request myself, right? I, I got this card. Now it's saying it's coming from Jim. It, it's saying that this video belongs to this project. And there's just a few, like uh, just checklist items that I, I need to do. But basically the process is that now I, I know where to download the, the video to or upload it to the right project site. So the way I do that is uh, I open the video link here so this takes me back to stream to the actual video. So now I can up, go to update video de uh, details. And so this is an opportunity for me to, and this is the actual human part of it, where I can, I, I might need to fix the title. There might be a typo. There might be a comment. You can add comments here. Uh, so Jim might have said, you know what, rename the, the title to uh, uh, working session. We'd like to say what kind of uh, a video it is right so i renamed it i might want to maybe just set the language so now I, i'm ready to upload this to sharepoint so if i go back to the video details and kind of as a shortcut so so that i don't have to download wait for it to download and then upload to the right location what we did is that we synchronized the media libraries for for our project sites so each one of the project sites has a media library and, and we use the sync option so that I can just download it locally. And as it finishes, it, it will uh, upload it to the right location in SharePoint. So let me do that. Uh, so I'll select the project the Jim indicated and save it. All right, so that's that should very quickly download and upload it. So now let me go to the project site so this is the media library. These are the videos that have been curated. Let me just refresh. This hasn't uploaded yet. So while we wait, something to note here is that there is a custom column here called the uh, news page URL. So this indicates that the video uh, has been curated and there is a news page created for it. We also notice that there is a thumbnail. Part of the process is that we set a custom thumbnail. So uh, let me show you the while we wait for that to finish the flow here. So once the video is there in the project portal, I mean, we could pretty much say that the recording is ready and the, the, the guest accounts can now watch the video, but we decided to further complicate it, like Jim said, and make it easier for the, for the customer. So, cause they don't know that the video is there. So we decided uh, that we could also create another flow that creates a news post, which is what I showed you there. So we have another flow here that is running on a schedule. So it's, it's running every night and it's looking for videos that are not curated. So that videos that don't have that, that column filled in with the news page. And the first thing it does is, again, it calls project server to get a list of all of our active projects and in support projects and just get an array of all of the those project site URLs. And then it, it's going to iterate through all of these project sites and call custom uh, Azure function that we created. Yeah. So it's it's calling the, the Azure function and just passing in each one of the project site URLs as a parameter. Now, most of the heavy lifting is done in the Azure function. So I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly show what it does in a bit. But once it's done, it just it starts formatting a, a, a result HTML with the customer name, just a list of the customer name, the project name, and, and what the result was. And 
once it gets all of those, it just sends an email to the curator, just indicating the status, how many videos got curated, or if there's any issues, it'll, it'll show that in the email. Let me see if this is ready. Okay, so it's here in the bottom. So this is the video I just uploaded. We notice it doesn't have any thumbnail and it doesn't have any URL here. So once the flow runs, it's gonna query the, the, this project library and it's gonna find that this, this is the one that we need to curate. If we had more, it would, it would pick up all the videos that, that are uh, available. So let's go back here. So just to quickly look at the code, uh, what it does, I don't have time to go over each one of these, but it, it's the Azure function is calling the curate videos method. It's setting a thumbnail depending on the video name. So if it's a working session, it, it uses a working session thumbnail or a scrum meeting. So it, it does that. It creates a news page. Uh, it, it promotes it as a news item. It, it adds a web part to embed the, the video and, and just adds a title to it. And then finally, it, it flags that video as curated by giving it the, the news page URL. So once it's done, so let me let me run the flow. So it runs in a schedule, but we can also uh, manually trigger it. So let me let me just click run, just to show what the end result is. Uh, once the flow runs, it creates a news item here on the customers page, and it looks something like this. So it just creates a news item with the with the embedded video and the title, and that's it. Really cool stuff. Thank you, Francesco, and thank you, Jim, as well. Thank you.